much you feel like you're prepared for something. It, it never happens on your time, like when you think you're ready. It always happens when it's supposed to happen. Because the period that you feel ready and people are not acknowledging the material the way you feel like they should because it's good is the time that you actually develop skin thick enough to survive when it does work. Look, there's going to be people unhappy with the success that you have regardless. You know, without knowing who you are, an individual could look and just judge you and say, I don't like that. He got that diamond goat mm -hmm. on his neck. Why did he put that there? You got to be a certain kind of person because he, he liked Donnie. And then they could just assume that you, anything they would like to register negative, they can just register it negative. Some people, they have the, uh, the trait of, like let's say the person's across the street, they look at you, they don't like you from across the street. Some people feel like the need to go across the street to say, why I'm a good person. I don't give a f I genuinely don't give a f about how those people care about me across the street because they don't care about me. Is it okay for me not to care about people that don't care about me? I mean, like, the simple things, like if you look and you go, it would be entertaining for them to see me in crisis. So if you saw that and you go, why would you care about a person who would like you to see under the worst circumstances you could be under? I feel like you can will yourself into a good space. Things that are meant to happen will. And if you believe in yourself, enough you can help yourself learn. You can inspire you know, yourself in different ways where you can actually discipline yourself, you know, to the point that you can become good enough. Like from 97, like when I started writing, it was full time. Like every day I was writing music because I had no choice. If I was gonna stop hustling, then how was I gonna provide or create, continue the lifestyle that I created for my son's mom, my son, and myself. So I was ready in 97. And I didn't have a major record company marketing to promote my project until 2003. You know, so for that time period, I had to run on my own energy. You know, I had to convince myself that I'm going to make it, you know, regardless of how people felt at that time. And what, what it does is it, make, it makes you feel like, well, it made me feel like there's going to be points that people are going to mistake my confidence for arrogance because I've had to, they don't understand the process I went through. Whether it's your actual blood relatives or, or people that you've developed relationships over time that created value. There's points where some of them develop a sense of entitlement and it can't be met. Like what they feel like they're entitled to, you can't really do that for them. They get blinded by what you've done and they consistently say, look what you have versus acknowledging what you've already done or just what you've done for them personally. They'll look at it and still be like, but you have, they get into that thought process where, but you have so much based on your accomplishments. You know, you just fall into the new rooms with, with new people in them and they accomplish so much that they'll minimize your accomplishments. You'll look and go, okay, I need to go to work. A lot of billionaires that are out there that aren't as notable. And then when you figure out how they did it, you go like that, so. Are they willing to share with you? Yeah, you got a moose on, you just like, <laughs> smooth. 2013, and I pull up at the light in a hoopty. I'm in a Dodge, 93 Dodge Caravan. I didn't wash it, and I'm telling you, roll the window down. And you look over, and you don't roll your window down. He won't roll his window down. Take the same scenario, you put that guy in that Bentley at the light, and the guy pulls up next to him and the Ferrari and says, hey, roll the window down. He'll roll the window down, because it was a choice. But he feels like you may have something to say of value to me just in, on presentation. You know, um, like I say this to younger actual you know, guys out there that to kind of fit the description. Like if I was going somewhere and it wasn't, I have to be conscious of it. I can't do the three piece when I'm there as 50 Cent because then the audience will look at you like their parents instead of the actual artist that they appreciate. You know, but if you actually want to make the window roll down, you have to fit the description. Make those relationships to talk business more Curtis than 50 Cent.
When you see you go up, they'd like to see you come down. It's the artist community that does this. It's the new, your fellow artist that, that does this to you. Because they look and they go, if you go up and you stay up, then I'm going to have my shot. This is why they go, oh no, that first album, oh, the first album was fire. You don't notice everybody's first album is fire? Why do they say that? They say that each, to every artist. They'll go Illmatic, they'll go Reasonable Doubt, they'll go Get Rich to Die Trying, Biggie, Ready to Die. All these albums, the first album. They'll pick that one and say that one was a classic. No matter what they do afterwards, they won't compare that material to that album. I try not to let things that affect me that, that I can't change. Right. You know, you can't change publicly how people perceive you. At points, you see the harshest things ever. You, you think the timing would just be, you just be in an emotional state where you can't really, you're not tough at the moment, sensitive because you're not paying attention and you see some shit publicly that a person said about you that you go, whoa. And it really bothers you that the person just said that, no matter who you are. You know, and I just don't allow that to, to create a, a new vulnerability for me. I allow it to not matter. You know, you, you make investments in different things. Sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. More losses than wins, but when you do win, it wins so big, it makes up for everything. You know, and that, that's that been the journey, the experience, and then when I, I shift to do things in a different way, like people look now and say, they feel the momentum of, the, of me in television. I started this 10 years ago. I lost my, you don't see my losses. Like it happens, you know, periodically. I don't usually see people excited leaving the, the tables in Vegas if they didn't put chips on the table. The, well, the most ruthless people or, that you run into are gonna be people that are just focused and not necessarily taking your life into consideration while they're taking theirs. It's, it's like the district attorney's office that she wants the conviction so she can move up in her career but she'll give you a hundred years. And you look, you go, why? Why so much? Like, why you had to do that? And it was like, what? You did it. In her mind, it's, it's her doing her job and her moving up to the next level and she'll just knock you over. You just become collateral damage. There's more ruthless people in the business world than in the street. You know, like, they, they just have subtleties to their tactics. How they do things is, small, you know, it's not confrontational, it's just, you know, but they're doing it right in front of you, you know, how they're structuring the actual deal that they're doing, it's like taking, just taking the money for you, look, robbery, at least it will give, give you the courtesy of showing you the gun, so you can have those anxieties and feel those feelings that you would feel when you're being robbed, they'll do it on a piece of paper where you feel nothing and just rob you right there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's the same tactics with a different approach. And a lot of them, the, the people that do this comfortably, like can you the contract, the, the thing that they're not conditioned for is direct conflict. And that the circumstances I grew under absolutely have to be prepared for. Like the fighters, they, they look good after they have eight weeks of training and they focus their mind for eight weeks straight. You got eight seconds in the street. You got eight seconds to adjust and do what you gotta do. But once you get, look, to entertain is to provoke emotions, right? So if the person doesn't love me, I'd like for them to hate me. So I could mean enough to them, right? It would just mean that I meant enough for them to have feelings for me. Because if you don't like me, then, then I don't matter. I, I wouldn't even exist to you if you don't hate me. At least let me get that energy out of you. you it's can. okay as long as you care enough about it to have feelings. Because that's what it is to entertain. I think the things you go through make you who you are. So I don't regret those things. I don't regret them because I don't think I'd be who I am today if I wasn't exposed to those situations. If you ask me what I, uh, those are unfortunate situations that I've had to experience. And if I had a choice, I would have definitely went in a different direction. But under those circumstances, when, when you're in an environment where you meet aggression with aggression or you're deemed weak, and the weak becomes the prey. You gotta kind of back people off for you at different points. And when you're willing to go as far as further than the other guy, you're always 
prevail. You always end up on top. It's like the kid in the schoolyard that doesn't want to fight always leads to the black eye because as soon as the other kid identifies he doesn't want to fight, he hits him.